Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm thrilled to be talking about the fantastic short film Red, White, and Blue. We are joined today by writer, director, and producer Nazrin Chowdhury, along with lead actor Brittany Snow. And Nazrin, talk, starting with you, I wanted to talk a little bit about just the the structural challenges of of telling such an intricate story within such a limited amount of time on screen. And you know, you you come from an amazing background where you've written for television in the UK and in the states so extensively. And I was interested in how that experience really translated over to the medium of short form storytelling and kind of knowing that you have a finite amount of time to tell a very complex story? Such an interesting question. Thank you for asking it. I actually started life out in film before I transitioned into TV, but I do think that experience in TV in terms of the multi-layered nuances that you need to bring, especially as you're having a long form um, series, that you need to always be thinking about story ahead of time. I think that certainly came into good use with this film. I have to tell you that this film, Red, White and Blue is a story around reproductive rights, but it's a very human and characterful story. And I was listening to the news last year and then this idea just came fully fleshed into my head one morning. I went to sleep on a Friday night, woke up on a Saturday morning and it was there. And I wrote it in about two or three hours. And I think what helped was having that kind of TV background. Uh, because if you watch the film, you'll see there's so many different layers to it. It was organically there, but the ability to have that experience in TV, meaning that I was always thinking about the story turns to come, meant that as I was writing it, I was able to implement that on the page. And then that carried through into set trying to think through every single frame, what needed to happen, how we needed to land the character stories and the depth of storytelling that we wanted to achieve. All of that was, yeah, I think, you know, the experience really helped me given that this was my directorial debut. And Brittany, I was so struck by how many small details there are throughout the film that just kind of give us more texture to who your character is as a person. And even just the fact that she lives in a one bedroom apartment with her two kids and she's the one that sleeps on the park couch in the living room and gives them the bedroom. Or when she's taking this, this road trip with her daughter, that she still gives money to the friend who's looking after her son, even though funds are very limited for her. And I was interested in your process of building this character and developing her, how you really went through a lot of the script details. And then when you're on set, even just production details to really find the, those deeper layers of her. Sure. I mean, I, I, I give credit so much to Nazrin to, to creating this world and writing the story, because when I read this script, um, I was doing another movie at the time and I read it, you know, probably within 30 minutes I was I was already crying and I texted my manager saying well I'm doing a short film because there was so much intricacy to to the characters and in such a short period of time you really got a sense of who Rachel was as um, a, a person and her 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 strength but not only you know topically like her strength because I feel like this is a story of of strength and womanhood but also just, I think that she encapsulates how every woman needs to be when they're a mother um, and how much they put themselves in a, in a secondary position in a lot of ways. And I think that, you know, it was a really great duality of her being um, a woman that we could all relate to and also being a character that I, I had never played before and that I think a lot of people haven't, haven't seen on screen. Absolutely. And, and you know, Nazrin, I, I was struck by what you were saying, obviously, with the film being very much in response to even more restrictive abortion rights throughout America right now. And I think the film does a really fantastic job at having this much larger conversation by creating a very intimate and grounded and personal story. So it doesn't feel didactic in the way that it's creating a dialogue. And so for both of you, I was just interested in, in how you approached creating a story like this and, and making sure it always came back to central character emotions and feelings to feel very personal. Well, for me, just to kind of chime in on this front, but I'm really um, want to see the ground to Brittany to speak about that because she's, we were so lucky to have Brittany come on board. She was on a um, very early wish list of mine. And the fact that I'm sitting here on this Zoom with her, even now, having had her <laughs> talents on this film is just, I, I keep pinching myself every single day. This story, even though it's about reproductive rights, really in essence, I think is about what it means to be a mother. 
you know, we're talking about um, protecting what is fundamentally human rights issue but it was really important I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned that word didactic because that was far from what I wanted this to be I didn't want it to feel worthy I just really wanted to tell a story about a character like Rachel and the situation she finds herself in and then ultimately thematically landing what true motherhood really means and I think Brittany just um she she's a triple threat, really. I mean, she's directed herself. She understands depth of storytelling across all of those um, ways in which she tells stories, whether it's as an actor, whether it's as a writer, whether it's as a director. So to kind of have her come on board and breathe life, life into Rachel to make us realize that we are really just witnessing the journey of one family, in America that's affected by this and leading with that uh, it speaks to the testament of her as our lead but also the beautiful family that we created um around this whole story but I'll I'll let Brittany speak to some of that because she's so eloquent in all of this on and off screen I need to I need to carry you around as like my <laughs> my my like pump up person in life Thanks. Um, Comes very naturally, I, by the way, to speak about you. <laughs> Thank you. I I think that I think what what you said from the very beginning, Nazrin, which was really important to me, and I think that we really um, carried that through within shooting was was that this was a very um, uh, direct and very lean way of storytelling in terms of nothing was said or done you know in an overly explained or didactic way which was preachy or or trying to push a, mes a message i think everything was really um a day in the life and and something that was really clear and so i think in creating rachel and and, and making sure that the story was really honest um we were really specific with and intentional with everything that you did and and i hope that i did and i think that that was really important to me because it wasn't this overarching sort of, you know, let's teach the world a certain lesson. It was just a day in the life with very direct, intentional purpose to everything that we said and did. And I think that really comes through when you see the when you see the short because because you really get a sense that this is just one day in a woman's life and in so many women's life. Absolutely, and and Nasrin, I also love the fact that you you know, as you were saying before, you wrote the first draft of the script very quickly because it was very instinctive in how you wanted to tell the story. But you also kind of talked your daughters through the, the concept of it early on and then had them read the script. And I was just very interested in the experience of sharing it with them and, and their response to it. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was writing it for them because they are set to inherit it, the legacy of Roe v. Wade effectively being reversed you know, long after it's no longer an issue for me, just because of, you know, the very nature of what it means to be a woman. Um, and so, yeah, I woke up, like I say, said to you on a Saturday morning, and it was fully fleshed in my head. I knew every single frame of this story. And pretty much everything on the page that I ended up writing down is what you see on screen, other than adjusting for like practical locations and so on. But I went on a walk on that Saturday morning with my eldest and pitched it to her frame by frame. I think they've got used to just having a mother who's a storyteller. So they live stories all the time because they are either seeing me like mesmerized in whatever script I'm doing and um, talking out loud and acting these characters out loud because I did used to act once upon a time myself. So when I write, I'm inhabiting these characters because it's the only way that I feel like I can write authentically. So I took that onto that our morning walk and pitched it to her frame by frame. And then the evening I had um, was dropping off my youngest to a hangout with her friends and pitched it to her in the car. And every time the story just landed with them in a way that they could see it. And because I knew they could see it just in the telling of it, I knew I had a story that I absolutely had to tell. And that next Sunday sat down, I think it's the quickest I've ever written a script. I think Brittany just spoke to the fact that it was the quickest she's read a script. And I think I think I remember when we sent it off, we got an answer literally that day. And <laughs> given that yeah. 
you know, um, she's very much in demand. I did not expect to hear back from Britney's team as quickly as I did, but I hope that speaks to the power of the story that we needed to tell and the reasons why we needed to tell it. Because, you know, the even the title, Red, White and Blue, really is alluding to the flag that we all live under in the United States of America. And even though the story that we tell affects people in different ways and at different levels, depending on what state you're in, it is something that can affect everybody in this country. You know, you could pick up and move somewhere because you have to for a job and suddenly you're faced with these restrictions. I think red, white and blue is alluding to the fact that this is a problem for everyone in America, actually, whether you have reproductive rights or not, even if you don't have uh, those rights or those issues directly affecting you, um, you know someone who it will affect. And then there's a universality of this story as well. I think um, speaking to one of my producers, uh, Sarah, um, who, who's been working on this alongside me, just realizing it also translates across the world. Uh, reproductive rights is a global issue. And sometimes when you're um, overseas looking at what America is doing, you realize, if that can be rolled back here in the land of the free, then it can be uh, something that is going to affect women worldwide. So, yeah, I think I've digressed from uh, the question that you asked me. So please feel free to bring me back on topic. <laughs> no, I love those details. And, and Brittany, in, in coming back to what you were saying before about it very much is just this day in the life of a character at the same time, you get to go through this really intricate journey of how does she respond to a, you know, in a moment of crisis for her and for her family, and who is she going to be as a mother for her kids in that moment? Um, and I was so struck by the way that she just like very much internalizes everything. She doesn't want to pass any level of burden onto her kids of trying to figure this out. So we see just the quietness of, you know, how long is the drive going to be? How much money do I have? How much more do I need to make in tips as a waitress? Um, and so I was just interested in the experience and the journey for you and really answering those questions along the way of how she was going to respond to each step of the situation. Thank you. Yes, I, I think that that was, a, you know, a conversation that Nazar and I had, which was that sometimes faced with, you know, these big life decisions, a lot of us think, oh, what would we do? It would be so hysterical or it would be so, you know, complicated, but I think what was really beautiful about this is that it's so clear to her. And I wanted to make sure that in my, you know, in how I portrayed her, it, it was very clear, although difficult. It, it, it wasn't something that I think you are met with, you know, adversity in your own mind. You're, you have to do these certain things. And so I, I think that it was really important um, for me to, to kind of have the nuance of, of the struggle within this sort of like tea kettle sort of situation where you're you're feeling that, but you're not seeing it because I think she's so um so clear in, in her in her strength. And I, I think that was really important. And I talked to Nazrin about that when I first signed on. I said, you know, I, I don't I don't think she's the type of woman that would ever show her kids what she's she's going through regardless if it had to do with them or not um i think she's very altruistic in that way yeah. i think you see that in the depth of britney's performance like we, we really wanted to have a really realistic grounded feel to this story and the camera holds on britney because she's so brilliant at being able to internalize so those feelings, which you do in everyday life, but she reflects that internalization. And even as she's being very, you know, stoic, I think is probably a good word about the situation that she's faced in. When you, with the camera holds on Britney, you can see all of the emotions that she's keeping under control. And like women have to do every day because they have to carry on living life for themselves for their for their families you know for their children I think you know it's a real credit to Brittany to see all those layers and nuances of the performance that I knew I would get from her which is why we went to Brittany in the first place so it's a real credit to her and the young actors that we have that they really felt like a a family that we recognize um 
you know, in our own lives, I think across this country, they're very emblematic of people who are just um, getting on with having to survive. And it is it is such an intimate way in which the camera really captures that that kind of like necessary stoicness that you were talking about at the same time as everything underneath the surface. And so for both of you, I was I was just interested in kind of the approach and the collaboration and working together between Britney's performance and in between the way that you've used the camera so intimately, Nazrin, with like just the shot choices to really kind of make sure that that carries through in every frame. Yeah, I mean, um, we talked a few times and we got together for a rehearsal um, in advance of filming. It was really an ambitious um, filming schedule. Um, so we got to know each other really quickly in a short amount of time. And again, I have to give um, credit to Brittany. I think when we first spoke, if I'm allowed to share this, uh, Brittany had just directed um, her film Parachute. And so I think I just really lucked out because here I was having an actor who understands the process from behind the camera and she trusted me and I trusted her. Uh, I think we had a lot of mutual respect um, for one another and we had very open dialogues about just the life of this character even before she came on screen. Like, who is she? What's her story? Um, I think it was really important for Brittany to uh, three-dimensionalize this character. It's important for anyone to do that, but the level with which she approached that was just made my life easier. I think when we came to filming, therefore, there was just this already um, organic trust between us. And she's just, she just allowed me to direct um, because I think she knew that I trusted her and vice versa. What was that experience for you on the other side, Brittany? I, I completely agree. I mean, I think knowing Nazrin's work um, as a writer and also just the intensity and the talent that I read within, you know, a short film is really hard to do, I think, because you're thematically trying to bring together a story within such a short period of time and you have to hit those arcs Um in an even more compact way. And so after I read it, I knew how talented she was. And then when we got together, we we did have such a mutual respect and I was just you know blown away by the story that she wanted to tell and how she wanted to tell it. And so I was really, I was really grateful that she was trusting me and she really did trust me, which I think is a huge, um, uh, which is a huge you know marking of a director that you're able to give away such a precious story in that way to to be able to say like you know what what do you think and and have that collaboration i think was just so lovely um and so i think that yeah we really we really worked together to to um create something in a short period of time in such an intense schedule and it was also really fun because i i know that we were creating a really intense story but i had never been a mother on screen before and I do have to say that I, I feel like I'm hooked now. <laughs> I was like, this is the best. I loved my kids. Like, they're not my kids, but I felt like they were. <laughs> I wanted them. And they loved her too. I mean, that was such a great little family unit. Um, Redding is just so sweet. He made us all pictures, I think, um, and especially for Brittany. And then Juliet is phenomenal in this. Um, you know, and I think for me, the story was always, you know, really put climbing into Rachel's skin and walking around in it and leading the story through that way. And, you know, as you know, from having watched the film, you know, that there is a story turning there and it basically is written in for, uh, I always knew that story turn was going to be the crux of our uh, film. And just having Brittany embrace and understand what that story needed to be from the get-go. Um, I mean, you'll see, uh, you know, she carries it and we have a whole cast of really talented actors who help us from the very first frame through to the end to help us land the story that we needed to land, which hopefully reinforces why 
we need to protect reproductive rights and there should be no question about it. And, and that's why I also just love visually the way that it's so cinematic on screen and so specifically thought out in terms of the different uses of color palette, the way that you're using lighting in different locations and different scenes. Um, and so, especially as the story progresses, how did you kind of make the determination of what feels like the right visual aesthetic, you know, at the beginning of the story, at the beginning of the middle of the story? And then, you know, I know we're being very cautious about kind of not giving away the spoiler part way through, but, but how you wanted that to shift and evolve towards the end as well. Yeah, I mean, I could certainly talk about from, from the get go, even with the red, white and blue, I had these images in my mind. You know, we start with the two red bars of the pregnancy kit. And that's the kind of the red that is the first act of our story. And then going into the kind of brilliant white road trip, which is them crossing from Arkansas through Missouri into Illinois and landing the kind of white, bright daylight. And we, we go into the nighttime drive of like a mother who is having to um, uh, get back home to her kid, but still be on the road to get the uh, healthcare that she needs. And then coming into the blue setting of that clinic uh, that she's had to drive, you know, eight hours and God knows how many hundreds of miles to get that treatment. So those color systems were kind of in there as markers of the chapters of the story that we wanted to tell. And then just visually, you know, I work in TV, as you mentioned, but going back to my roots in film, I really wanted Adam Sujitsky, who is our director of photography, he and I had worked together on Fear the Walking Dead. And he's such a beautiful cinematographer. We were really lucky alongside Brittany to get Adam's remarkable talents on this film. We have so many wonderful crew members who, um, alongside the cast, gave us the you know full extent of their craft and skills um, you can see that in this film. And so he and I prepped quite extensively, actually, in advance of shooting the film. And I had said to him that I was so used to TV having all these, like, you know, pickups and angles and so on, and the camera's moving all the time. I really wanted to have a stillness in the way the camera was moving and to just hold on our characters and make, let them come in and out of the frames as much as possible. And because I feel like what I really wanted to land is that inner turmoil of Rachel and have that bubbling under the surface while letting the stillness of the character be a good juxtaposition against all of that. So there were all these very deliberate ways in which even the color palette, the tones and so on, to make this feel like Arkansas, to make it feel like the America that we all know and recognize and live in our daily lives. Um, and I have to give credit to the crew that helped us kind of get that uh, uh, across, whether in costume, hair and makeup, everyone knew what this needed to look like on screen because of the way that we wanted to really have the story lead versus, for me, I feel like when I, the films that I admire is when you don't notice the filmmaking, if that makes sense. Maybe you're looking for it because you're a cinematographer, so you want to look at the cinematography, or you're a hair and makeup artist and you're like analyzing it. But if we've done our well job well, then even those artisans of the craft are transported by the story and maybe they go back and look at those details on the second watch. But we just want to transport you and we want to... You know, one thing that I wanted to say earlier uh, I, I, to a question that you answered is it was really important for me to feel like, even though this is a short film, that you got the depth of storytelling that you would get in a 90 minute full length feature film, but in the span of 22 minutes, but only felt like five minutes in the watching because all of those things should just melt away. You are so inside the story that you don't even realize, um, you know, much of the artistry that's gone into it unless you were to go and rewatch it. And so, yes, when our story kind of turns as well, in a way, there are many things that we do with our camera that are ideas that Adam came up with um, that we then uh, developed um, or things that I wanted to do um, that we implement. And I think, you know, as you watch the story, the first time, hopefully you're not even noticing any of that. But if you were to go back, 
you'll see all these layers of storytelling, but even what we're doing with our camera, it's landing our story, but you're not supposed to get that on the first watch. Maybe go back and see it on the second watch. That, that's such a great point because I, I watched the film a couple of times and it is a different experience the second time you watch it because there are all, there are all these interlaced details. In. And to that point, Brittany, I wanted to ask about how you kind of made sure that you were very careful with your choices in your performance to really make sure that you were capturing everything that's truthful to the story, but not giving away full details until the, the narrative is ready to do so. Yes, and I, that, that's my favorite type of storytelling and, and actually favorite type of movie watching, to be honest, is when you're you're caught with a surprise and then you have to, on another rewatch, understand that those choices that might not have seemed, or maybe they seemed correct or, or in, right in the moment, but actually on a rewatch, you're understanding that, that that choice that the actor is making is actually about something completely different. I love, I love that. Because I think as human beings, we do that all the time where we misinterpret someone's decisions. And then later when we understand their their motives, we we get a full picture of, of why they were making the choices they made. And I think with Rachel, I really wanted to make sure that when you did watch it again, um, you were very clear on the fact that these these movements and and feelings and and the choices that she was making were all um, in service of the the larger story that I had, you know, in my head. And I asked Nazar a lot of questions about, you know, what that was and what the actual story was and what, you know, um, so I had it in my mind, but that it was never really explained or told. Um, and I think that just added to the the depth of the character and, and really helped me kind of flesh out a full rounded human being in, in her struggle. I was also so struck by the physical choices that you made in your performance as well for this character, because it goes back to that idea of the stoicness on the surface, but everything underneath, because whenever you're carrying an emotional burden, there's a physical toll that that takes on your body as well. Um, and so there's kind of that, what does it look like carrying the tenseness? But there are moments where she's able to emotionally escape that a little bit on the road trip with her daughter. And so we see different physical aspects depending on where she's at. So I was just interested in how you really shaped and crafted that. Definitely. I mean, I think a, a main focus of mine was the, the heaviness, like you were just saying, with her not only being a single mom and having to work and bringing her kids to her work and and just the toll of what that is and, and the physicality of that was really important to me. Um, and then, you know, it was really actually quite easy to have that lightness with Juliet, who played my daughter, because I did like genuinely love her and and we got along so well you know we would go on breaks and I and I would say to the crew and to Nazar you know I'm just gonna hang out with Juliet in the car because we're gonna like catch up and talk um and so I think I think that that was inherent in my performances just falling in love with these kids and letting the lightness of them pull her out of her heavy um burden and you don't necessarily get the intricacies of the burden but then when she's with her kids I really wanted that lightness to to come through. And so I'm so appreciative that you felt that because I think it was very easy for me to get that from them, you know, just as, as human beings. That's amazing. And and, and Nazareth, in, in kind of speaking about those moments of lightness, I love the scene where it is just a mother and a daughter in the car singing along to music. And, and I was interested in just hearing a little bit more about how that in particular came together, because I believe it was an original song written by someone originally who is a family member of yours, but then performed by your daughters in the track that we hear in the movie. Yeah, I had a placeholder song that Brittany will have read in the script when we first send it, sent it to her, which was Girls Just Want to Have Fun, you know, by Cindy Lauper. It's such an upbeat song. I used to play it to my girls driving to school every morning and doing the school drop off. So I was replicating that. But, you know, um, it's a short film. Nobody has the budget to go and get Girls Just Want to Have Fun. And it was the week before I was like, I don't have a song. What do I do? And this family member, Toby Jepson, who is a lead singer of um, two notable British bands, actually, um, Little Angels and also Wayward Sons, he happened to be on a round the world trip with his wife for six months that they'd finally taken. And they were in L.A. the week before we were filming. And he was listening to my dilemma and he offered up a number of tunes that we could have. 
And um, it, so I had my pick, but he's, you know, the male lead singer of these songs. And I said to him, because I don't know if you're aware, but there was a very deliberate choice and an intention to only have female voices on our um, film. So every line of dialogue, apart from the young, um, the the voice of the young, unadulterated you know, character that is uh, Jake, Rachel's son. He's the only male character that speaks in this. And I, even the music, I wanted to make sure that we had the voices of those who have reproductive rights being able to speak in this film and to lead, um, you know, the audio and allowing them to speak really in this film predominantly uh, over and above anyone else. He... um, he basically gave me the song and that week we re-recorded my girls singing the vocals because they, they're they great singers um, and they write music themselves. And yeah, somehow we were able to make sure that the artistic desire that I had to only put female voices in this, we had lots of really wonderful male allies who helped us tell this story, just to say that. But it was really important for me to just have the voices of people who this affects predominantly go through the film, even to the extent of the music in the film. Yeah. So then in the car singing and um, um, Brittany and Juliet, I would hear them in between the takes of that road scene in the car. Like they would be singing beautifully and doing what they needed to do. But then, you know, when we when we called cut, I would hear them sometimes just interacting in between. It was really lovely to hear just to kind of go back to what Brittany was talking about, hanging out with Juliet. It was it was a lovely experience having that um, feel very intimate because of my girls in that scene, but also just watching them and their interplay on and off screen. Well, I'm, I'm so impressed by what you've both created alongside the rest of the team and, and telling this story. And you've done such a fantastic job. And I think it's testament to the film that it is something that, you know, each rewatch will give you so many more layers to what you've crafted. So congratulations on everything. And thank you so much to both of you for talking about it. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate your time. And um, thank you.